Well, hello and welcome to the Capitola Planning Commission meeting of August 28, 2022. In accordance with the current Santa Cruz County Health Order and the Governor's Executive Order in 2920, this meeting is not physically open to the public. Commissioners and staff are meeting via Zoom, and there are several ways for the public to watch and participate. Information on how to join this meeting using Zoom or a landline mobile phone, uh, along with how to submit public comment during the meeting tonight, is available on our website, cityofcapitola.org, on the slide shown uh, on, on now, and on the published meeting agenda. As always, this meeting is cablecast live on Charter Communications, Cable TV Channel 8, and the AT&T Universe, Uverse, Channel 99, is being recorded and replayed on the following Monday and Friday, 1 p.m. on Char Char Charter 71 and Comcast Channel 25 meetings can also be viewed live on the city's website. I'm wondering if this is an old introduction, but anyway, that's most of the uh, information. And our uh, technician tonight is Olivia Felly. <coughs> and with that, um, let's begin the meeting with roll call. Olivia, can we have a roll call, please? Sure. Commissioner Christensen. Here. Commissioner hmm. Newman. Uh, here. Commissioner Ruth. Here. Commissioner Westman. Here. Chairwick. Here. Okay, we have a quorum and we'll move on then to oral communication. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? There are no additions or deletions to the agenda this evening. Okay, with that, we can move on to public comments. This is an opportunity for the public to speak on matters that are not on the agenda. They'll be given the three minutes uh, to speak on items that are not on the agenda, and, but are of interest to the community and the Planning Commission at large. So um, you're able to come on either by Zoom or uh, by email, uh, we'll, are there any public comments? I see three attendees on Zoom and no, none of the attendees have their hands up. Okay, let's move on then to commission comments. Are there any commissioners who wish to speak on items not on the agenda? Oh, I should get on my screen so I can see you all. And uh, I don't see any hands raised, so let's move on then to staff comments. Um, I just wanted to announce that um, at next week's meeting on, on August 25th, the city council meeting, they're going to a hybrid. Um, and from that there, we have a draft hybrid admin policy that's been put together. The city council is going to review that at next week's meeting and then once they have reviewed that i'll send that out to the planning commission and we will um, follow their suit in terms of our hybrid meetings the initial conversations on that was that um, they'd like to have three city council members at each meeting and then two to remain at home so that there's social distancing between the seating so at the end of each of their meetings, they're asking for who would like to attend the next council meeting. So I think uh, if we do the same practice here at planning commission meeting, we're planning on going into our hybrid at the next hearing, the next meeting. Um, so at the end of this meeting, I will be asking if there's three volunteers to attend the next meeting in person and then two to stay remote for that first meeting. And they also were in agreement that if anyone feels more comfortable at home, that's absolutely fine, but a maximum of three. Thank you. Okay, very good. Let's move on then to the consent calendar. We have one item on the consent calendar, um, item A, 3720 Capitola Road and 1610 Bulb Avenue. Uh, would you want to give us a rundown on that, Katie? You know, there's a request to continue this item. It's a um, conceptual review for a future assisted living facility, and they've requested to continue without a date certain. Okay, so yeah, so that's A. That, and then item B is uh, 1350 49th Avenue. And, and the, that, the rundown there is that you um, had a presentation on that at your last meeting. There were questions about the encroachment 
a memo is attached to the staff report from the city attorney's office, and that's the update there. So yeah, basically we wanted a clarification from legal before we approved the encroachment, and now we have it. So uh, with that, uh, does anybody wish to pull anything from the consent calendar, either the public or um, the commissioners? I would just like to comment on 1350 49th Avenue. Okay, go ahead, Commissioner. I don't, want, I don't want to pull it because I, as I said in the last meeting, I think it's a good project and we now have some cover from the attorney's office, but I, I think technically it's still um, defective. I, um, the uh, owner of property has to be the one to uh, apply for a permit in Capitola under our ordinance and the owner of the adjacent property who has buildings that uh, extend over the property line can't uh, get a permit to do work on the adjacent property. There's just so many legal uh, issues that could come up if, for example, uh, we had to file a notice of violation, which property would you file it against? Uh, liability, uh, just a host of issues. I, I don't agree that we can just give a permit to uh, a property owner and to do work on the adjacent property. So uh, I'm gonna support it for, with that qualification. Um, did you wanna pull your vote or did, did you want to? Uh... No, I, I'm, I think it's, we have cover from the uh, city attorney's office. I just think in the future, um, we ought to be careful about that. I mean, you could take an example of where someone wants to grade an easement on a neighbor's property. I mean, the property owner has to get the permit and be responsible for what's going on on their property. And so this, this does not set a good precedent. Understood. Are there any other comments uh, before we entertain a motion on the consent item? Being no hands raised, does anybody wish to make a motion on the consent calendar? A motion to approve the consent calendar for uh, item A and B. Okay, I have, we have a motion. Do we have a second? This is Commissioner Westman. I'll second it. We have a motion by Commissioner Christensen and a second by Commissioner Westman. Any further discussion? If not, let's take a roll call vote on the con consent item. Uh, Louis, we have that vote. That roll call, please. Yes, please. Commissioner Christensen. Aye. Commissioner Newman. Aye. Commissioner Westman. Aye. Commissioner Root. Commissioner Root. Uh, aye. Yes, aye. Chair Wick. Okay, so I'm confused. You saw that I. Uh, I couldn't hear you said Commissioner Root or Commissioner Wilk. Commissioner Root first and Chair Wilk last. I, do we have a, an eye from Commissioner Root? Yes. yes, you did. Okay, okay, I didn't hear that. Okay, and I from the chair. Okay, so it's unanimous. Let's move on then to public hearing. Item A, Wharf Road tree removals. Do we have a staff report? Yes, we do. Good evening, commissioners and Chair Wilk. The application before you is actually an application with the city serving as applicant. Uh, and here with us, we also have the Public Works Director, Steve Jesper. This is a tree removal application to remove two pine trees at the intersection of Wharf Road, Stockton Avenue, and Cliff Drive. City staff is deferring the application to Planning Commission due to the potential for public interest. And here are the trees. We've labeled them in case there's references, T1 and T2, similar to the Arborist Report. The trees proposed for removal are two Canary Island pine trees located within the public right-of-way. Adjacent the trees are the Venetian Motel Office and 1504 Wharf Road. It's a condominium behind it. The trees are between 50 to 55 feet tall and are in fair condition. They are not heritage trees and are not located in an environmentally sensitive habitat area. 
In considering their removal, the Public Works Department hired an independent arborist to evaluate both trees. For the Planning Commission to approve the removal of a non-heritage tree, at least one of the findings for removal must be made and there must be no feasible alternatives. The findings, which include health of the tree, safety considerations, and property damage are shown above, will be addressed uh, in the following slides. <laughs> I'm just going to go over these briefly as they were uh, covered almost verbatim in the staff report. But as a summary, staff and the arborist did not make fi a finding that the trees were dying or at a high risk of falling. With respect to the second uh, potential condition, or finding rather, the uh, staff and the arborist did not make a finding that the trees posed a substantial concern for safety either. And here, before we go to the next uh, finding, are several photos of the area around the pine trees. The assessment of both staff and the arborist was that there were numerous instances of damage radiating from the root zones of both trees. Mm -hmm. And so with that, staff and the arborist made findings on both tree number one and tree number two that there's an unreasonable level of property damage that has occurred to the public improvements around these trees. Possible alternatives to the removals to removal uh, were considered, and the arborist recommended that the preservation uh, of number one be uh, taken into consideration with some suggested mitigations. Those are listed on the screen. Staff believes that the removal of only one of the two trees would likely result in continued damage uh, to the surrounding space and is therefore recommending the removal of both trees and uh, subsequent replacement with more appropriate alternatives. That staff recommends the approval of the project uh, based on the findings and conditions of approval. Very good. Thank you, Sean. Uh, are there any planning commission questions of staff presentation? Mick Ruth has his hand up. Uh, Commissioner Ruth, go ahead. Yeah, Sean. Do you have an estimate of what it would cost to repair the damage that's occurred? I do not have an estimate. Um, I can ask Steve to speak on that. He, he may have an idea, though. John, do you have the ability to promote Steve to a panel? I am actively doing that. <laughs> okay. All right, let's, let's hold for... Mr. Jesper. Hello, Commissioner, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Sorry. Um, to answer Commissioner Ruth's question, the amount to repair the damage is probably in the range of uh, ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Um, we could go in there and, and grind it much cheaper, but to actually move and replace and do what's proper there, it's probably not price range. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Commissioner Christensen, you have your hand up? Yeah, I was just curious um, that to, to re grind out the stumps and fix the sidewalk, the damage, whatever it has been made far and to replace the tree is is what you guys would prefer is what I'm understanding is that correct are you thinking yeah. um we would like to re we would like to remove both trees we've been um the neighbors there have been on us for years about the damage to the sidewalk and the needles falling um that's why we did the arborist report to see what their health was um, with one tree being recommended for removal from the arborist, we think it's wise at this point just to remove them both. Uh, mm -hmm. We will re-landscape the area after we do the sidewalk improvements in the area and um, probably go to some form similar to the other side of Stockton Avenue Bridge, uh, utilizing palm trees and lower 
landscaping bushes or things like that. We do not have a site distance problem we, that we do at the other intersection. So it's slightly different, but we have not come up with a formal plan, but I think that's uh, my description is pretty accurate. Okay. So, you, so you're thinking of replacing those pines with a, a palm, palm tree? Correct, correct. In that location? Well, somewhere in that planted landscape area, yes. And that would probably be far cheaper than trying to mitigate trimming uh, with the arborist suggested by um, trimming the fruit and trying to mitigate intrusion. Is that right? Yeah, I think even with the arborist um, opinions and recommendations, we're talking about trying to save one of the two trees. And I think it's likely we will continue to see damage to the sidewalk. And eventually, I think we'll be back before the commission trying to remove the other tree. Whether that's a year from now or 10 years from now, I don't know. But I think uh, since we're removing one, let's go ahead and remove both. Okay, thank you. Mr. Newman, you have your hand up. A uh, quick question of uh, Mr. Jesper. Do we have any idea of the natural uh, life of this uh, species of tree? I do not. I'm sorry. Thank you. Did the arborist say anything about that, Sean? I believe they classified it as uh, maturing, so not at a, at a point where it would be in its decline is my, my take on that. Okay. Uh, Courtney, you have her hand up again or hand up still? Yep, I forgot to lower it. Thank you. No problem. Uh, I have a couple. Uh, any other questions? I have a couple. Um, the, the sidewalk is the only item in question in terms of damage. Are there, is there any sewage or power or anything, power lines, anything else that is in danger uh, from a safety wise or from a, a public works uh, impact? I'm not aware of any utilities that are being impacted by the trees. Okay, and you're, you say you're planning on replacing the two uh, pines with two palm trees. Uh, generally, when we ask uh, the public applicants uh, who want to remove their trees, we, we ask one of two things, either replace two to one, which means you should replace those palm trees with four palm trees, or the or we say, well, let's just worry about canopy coverage. And so um, it's a 15% canopy coverage, uh, but we obviously you'd be reducing canopy coverage going from pine to palm. Uh, is there any thought of increasing canopy coverage or planting more trees elsewhere on public property to meet the intent of uh, those kinds of rules? So we're currently working on a project um, to do all of our tree mitigation, if I will, the, the second tree for each one we remove. Uh, we removed a bunch from City Hall, um, I want to say eight, uh, approximately a year and a half ago. Uh, we are now currently working on a project to do a tree replanting along the lower parking lot in City Hall, mainly along Bay Avenue. That that corridor there, there's been several trees there that have fallen down from natural causes. So we're not mitigating those, but we will add two more trees to mitigate the two trees uh, so we can get to four trees from the site. So we'll have two on site and two at the lower parking lot. Um, question of, uh, of staff, um, Katie, I'm trying to recall if we've ever uh, used uh, sidewalk displacement as a rationale for allowing an applicant to remove a tree before. Um, I recall there's places up on Depot Hill where there's a lot of trees that are pushing sidewalks around and nevertheless we say you got to keep that tree because it's big or heritage or something. I, I do recall an application in the avenues and I apologize for not knowing exactly uh, the location, but that w it was disrupting, I think, a driveway as well as the sidewalk, and it was allowed to come down. So that was Capitola Avenue. That Capitola Avenue, and I think there was another one, maybe in the avenues um, above the jewel box. Yeah, my recollection. 
there was one on there was, but it was a, on private property not public so just for the people that i'm thinking of there was one on capitola avenue as well there was one on capitola avenue there was one on capitola road there was a cedar big cedar tree on capitola road that's right well, we had a hearing on Capitola Avenue just a couple uh, right. yeah. ago. Yep. Yeah. I remember it's getting bad. Okay. Uh, any other questions of uh, staff? Okay. Um, then we can move on to uh, public comment. Are there any public comments uh, on this issue? I'm not seeing any new comments in our email. There were a couple that came in before the packet was published and they were included with the staff report. Um, and I'm also not seeing any hands raised. All right, very good. Um, then let's move on to Planning Commission deliberations. Anybody wish to discuss this, the merits or the merits of the, this uh, item? I'm willing to start. Go ahead, Commissioner Ruth. Yeah, I, have, I have some concerns, primarily because I've seen this, and I think it's been probably the last 18 months or so, we've allowed three, or at least two of the largest trees in Capitola to be removed, not because they were diseased, but because basically the owners didn't want to provide the maintenance and they were fearful of falling limbs. That's the big pine that we allowed on 49th and the big cedar tree, which is one of the largest trees in the entire city on Capitola Road. And then we had the one that was causing some property damage, which wasn't really major on Capitola Avenue. Uh, I just think we have to do more to protect our trees and for an investment of 10 to $15,000 to repair whatever damage is there. I think those two trees are worth it. And, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't see a major problem if we attempt to maintain those trees and make a minor expenditure to repair the damage. Cause those are, those are two important trees. They're, they're very visual as you come down the hill, either hill down cliff drive or down, down wharf road. Uh, I just hate to see us removing all our large trees because we don't want to maintain them, or we don't want to repair some minor damage. Just doesn't make sense to me. What else? Hey, I'll uh, I'll take the other side of that. I um I think our tree ordinance is uh, it's a bit restrictive for for my uh, taste, but it is what it is. Um, the thing about uh, older large trees is that they're not going to last forever. So if we, the upside to replacing these trees besides the sidewalk and so forth is that you get newer, younger trees that 20 years from now will be much better off with, or 10 years from now, than we will with the trees that are there right now. So it's kind of an investment in the future, uh, really, to do this. Um, so I'm going to support the uh, staff's recommendation, but I do find it interesting that the applicant is the city of Capitola and the city of Capitola recommends approval. So, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> <it was apart>. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Weston. Uh, well, I actually agree with both Commissioner Ruth and Commissioner Newman. I agree with Commissioner Ruth. I think there are some large trees that we have allowed to be removed, which perhaps we shouldn't have. But in this particular case, I don't think the kind of tree, the pine trees where they're located, um, are really the trees that should be there. And sometimes we all make mistakes when we plant trees. Um, some of you may remember that I used to live on Bay Avenue and there's some very large redwood trees in front of the house I used to live in, which shouldn't really have never been planted there, but I confess I did it. And in this case, I think uh, removing these trees and planting two trees that will be more appropriate in the future um, is the way to go. Thank you. Okay, um, 
I tend to agree with Commissioner Ruth. Um, it, just looking at the looking at the code and the rationale for removing these trees, uh, I think it's a, a contorted rationale. The rationale is one of public safety. I mean, if they're not diseased, all, if it meets all the other requirements. Um, uh, the, the safety concern is, is the raised cur or no, it's not even safety concern, it's a property damage concern. And, uh, and again, even, even if it isn't a $15,000 investment, grinding down the curb is something you see all the time. That's just how routes are handled throughout the state. Um, and so that's not, I think that's a reasonable sacrifice to make in order to save a tree. Now, if they're going to, you know, they're going to replace these pines. Maybe pines don't belong there, but certainly palm trees aren't native to this area either. Um, if they were to replace it with a cypress or something, maybe that would make more sense. Although that, I'm sure that would have a root problem as well. But uh, I, uh, I don't think there's enough rationale to uh, to have these trees removed. Uh, Commissioner Westman, do you still have a hand up or? No, sorry, I forgot to take it down. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, Courtney, no, any comments? Okay, let's uh, look for a, uh, looking for a motion. Okay, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the uh, staff recommendation and the application. Do I have a second? This is Commissioner Westman, I'll second it. Do we have a uh, motion by Commissioner Newman and a second by Commissioner Westman to approve staff, staff recommendations? Any further discussion? I have one thing I couldn't unmute my um, my speaker. I apologize. This is Commissioner. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, there's a, a woman that just emailed in that said that she had been trying to sign on to say something and she hasn't been able to. Is that something that we can help with or is that not, is that just a technical issue? She, I know. Uh, it's, it's, we're past that point in the deliberations, but I'm willing to make an exception because of the difficulties associated with these Zoom meetings. Um, unless the, any commissioners object, I'd, I'd, look, I'd go ahead and let her chime in if we can. Well, we do have a motion on the floor. Yeah. Well, but we're also in discussion. No, we so closed the public portion. We can reopen it. She just she just emailed me um, 60 seconds ago. Yeah, as part of the, the deliberation, um, I, I'm curious to, to deliberate some more, and so I could I would appreciate some more uh, some more input from the public. Um, my name is Angela Steely Dean. I forwarded it to Sean. Okay, Sean, can you read that to us? Not 10 minutes long? No, it's just, it's, um, I, I don't know how to, how to fix it. So, anything. So uh, this is, uh, Planner Freilich. I, I, I've seen these emails and, uh, I had sent her the, she was having trouble with the YouTube link. So I sent her the, the Zoom link. So let's see if she can get on. Well, since this doesn't seem to be working, Brian, can you maybe give us the gist of what her emails are? She's saying she just was able to gain access on an email. Yeah, she does not state her position in the email. So, and Brian, can you confirm, do we have any, did she submit to the public comment? Um, yeah, I'm responding to the public comment email. And there she just simply says that she's unable to sign on to the meeting tonight. Hmm. I, I copied the link I used to join, so it should should work. Yeah. 
Oh, we'll give her another minute, but we can't uh, hold up the meeting forever. While we're waiting for her, for purposes of those people who may be listening in, we had two uh, comments that came in, and we haven't really, yeah, we haven't really discussed those or mentioned them. Maybe we should just fully summarize what those uh, citizen position was. Uh, in the um, interest of, go ahead, Katie, can you, can uh, you do Sean, that? Do you, Sean? Sean, can you provide a summary? Uh, yes, we received a couple comments that were included in the packet. They were, um, they were actually, I think three of them. They were all favorable towards removal. Um, and cited that they had caused a lot of mess in the surrounding public walkways and um, that they felt that they were either unruly to take care of or uh, were a hazard and it would be better to have them gone. All right. Uh, any luck with our... Uh... Chair Wilk, I'm not seeing that she's been able to log on. All right, well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and then close the public uh, input then. We have a, a motion and a second on the floor. Uh, last chance for deliberation. Let's go ahead then and take a vote on the motion. Uh, we, we have a roll call vote. Yes, please. Commissioner Christens. Yes. Commissioner Newman. Yes. Westman. Yes. Commissioner Rook. No. Chair Wick. No. Motion passes three to two. Um, good luck, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> With that, that's the, last of, that's the last of our public hearings. We can now move on to the director's report. <laughs> I have uh, one item to report out this evening. Um, on September 22nd, the City Council will be hearing the appeal of 1410 Prospect Avenue. Um, you'll recall that was a, a single family home there that will be reconstructed. Um, it received a design permit, a variance, a, um, a historic uh, design permit as well, and a coastal development permit. It was appealed by the RTC as they were concerned with the soil stability. We've had a third party review the soils and um, we'll be putting together a staff report for September 22nd. The second item um, that I, I would like feedback on from the Planning Commission is if we could get three volunteers to be, or up to three volunteers to be in person at our next meeting. I volunteer. What is it? It is, I want to say September 1st. This is Commissioner Westman. I volunteer. I can come. Hello. Commissioner Christian, am I, am I muted? No. No, no you're good. Okay. <laughs> I can do that. So there's that, the three, and then so by Elimination, Commissioners Ruth and Newman will zoom in. Is that, is that the rule? Thank you. Okay, I'm willing to sell my seat if anybody wants to give me a good... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I'm willing to sell my Zoom. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, with that, uh, we'll move on. Oh, is that it for director's report? Or do you have anything else? That was it. Thank you. Okay, very good. Commissioner of Communications, any commissioners wish to uh, give us a report? This is Commissioner Westman. I just have one comment, and that's to say that I was very disappointed in the repaving of Bay Avenue. Um, you know, I was sort of used to once streets got repaved that they would be nice and smooth, and this one's still seems to be quite rough. I think it's a new technique that's being used and it's not one that I think the city should continue to use. Hopefully Steve is still on the line. <laughs> he probably is. 
Um, any other comments? Communications? Not item number seven. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.